Today we're going to be making this circuit from scratch. I previously went over this circuit in, a, in my video on H-bridge circuit theory. So if you want to check out um, how the actual components interact with each other, uh, then give that a watch. But in this video, I'm going to explain how to actually lay out all of these uh, components and how to draw connections between them and do so in a way that can easily be converted to a PCB. Now listen up, because this is really important. Before you start uh, designing your schematic, you want to make sure you have the right components. Speaking from experience here, it's totally possible to have a perfectly laid out schematic, but if the components you select uh, don't have the right you know, tolerances or footprints, the whole schematic uh, will not work. So the first thing you need to identify is what components you need. In our case, we're gonna need MOSFETs and we're gonna be driving relatively low power motors. So we don't need, uh, you know, super um, beefy MOSFETs. We just need something uh, that can handle about four amps here. So I found this uh, transistor online and it's from Alpha and Omega. And that's what, that's what we're gonna use for our P-channel MOSFET. Similarly, I found one for, uh, that we can use as our NMOS. It is also uh, has similar power ratings, five amps right here and up to 30 volts. And the last thing we're gonna need is an opto isolator, which I found uh, from Everlight. And it's, it's, it's a pretty standard design. It, it doesn't really need to be from this company. Um, but it has a forward current rating of about 60 milliamps um, with a peak of about one amp, uh, six volt reverse voltage. Now that we have these components, we're gonna go back to our schematic. And so uh, we're gonna create a new KiCad project. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is add our symbols. So come here to the right and click this little triangle that says add a symbol. We're gonna click that and we need to search for our components. So we can come back to our data sheet and uh, we know that our P channel is gonna have uh, the name AO3401A. So we're gonna copy that, paste it into here, and there you have it. It turns out that this transistor is part of the CatCAD uh, library. So just double click it and place it right there. Click the uh, the canvas one more time and it'll just prompt you again and we're going to click that one last time press escape and there you have it those are our p channel mosfets so now we need our n channel mosfets we're going to come here and um find the the part number uh, which is irl ml6344 you can't paste this i already tried it so just come here and type it in manually. So navigate back here, IRL, and it's right here. Double click that, paste it one more time, paste the same thing over here, and we have our four MOSFETs. So one thing you can see here is that the gate on these two transistors to the right are pointing out to the left, and we want them pointing to the right. So we can easily fix that by doing a mirror horizontal. So mirror horizontally for this one too. And you can see here that the labels are kind of interfering with each other. So one thing we can do is just toggle this show button and it gets, ri gets rid of the loop. So we're gonna toggle. And toggle the P channels as well. So now that we have our MOSFETs set up correctly, uh, horizontally speaking, we need to make sure that they are also aligned vertically. Uh, and it turns out here that our P-channels are upside down. We want the sources uh, facing upwards. So we can come here and mirror vertically. So now uh, our MOSFETs are oriented correctly in every way. So we're going to connect uh, the two drains together um, on both the left and right side. 
And now we need to get uh, our other components. So we need the opto isolators. So we're gonna come in here and we're gonna select Boran 25 and go down to the generic isolator at the bottom. Click OK, paste, uh, and then it's gonna prompt you one more time. Paste it right here. And we want the inputs facing outwards, so we're gonna need to mirror this one horizontally. And now uh, we're gonna need some resistors. So click the symbol, and uh, it turns out that the name of the resistor is just R, uh, and you can find that if you just search R here, it's under devices and then R for resistor. We're gonna need one right here. We're gonna need one right here as well. And we're gonna need two more. Place here. Another thing you can do, just click escape, control C, and then you can paste it anywhere. Sometimes that's a little faster. And we're gonna need a power source. So what we're gonna use is something called a label. And that just means anywhere on the schematic that you see this label, um, everything that's connected to that label will be connected to each other. So we're gonna call this uh, V motor. And we're gonna place the label up here. And this power is gonna go to the sources of our transistors. Now, if you remember from our HBridge theory video, we need um, a connection between uh, the source and the, and the gate of our uh, transistors. So we're just gonna shift this down a bit and move this over here and connect the resistor between the source and the gate. So we'll do the same thing over here, move this down, align it properly and draw the connections. So now we have uh, our bleed resistors set up and we need to connect um, our opto isolators to the H bridge. So it turns out these gates are gonna be connected to each other so we can draw those. And the opto isolator output that's gonna to connect to the gate is pin five. So we'll connect pin five. And we need to connect uh, the emitter of the opto isolators to our motor ground. So we're gonna make another label and we'll call this uh, MGND for motor ground. And we will paste that here, escape, control C, paste it here as well. We're also gonna need one uh, right here and we're just gonna align it horizontally. So connect the sources of the end channel MOSFETs uh, to this ground. Um, or yeah. It's not the most pretty, but that'll work. And so now we need to configure the inputs to the opto isolators. So you can probably see from this diode that the current's gonna flow from one to two. So hook up the resistor to uh, the input one. And we're gonna add another label for the inputs from our microcontroller. So we'll call this uh, in one here for input one, draw a connection, control C, paste. And we're just gonna double click this and change its name to A2. Great, so now we're gonna need uh, a ground here for pin two, but it's gonna be a different ground from motor ground. Because if you remember, the H bridge is extremely noisy and the whole point of this opto isolator is to have two separate power uh, power sections in the circuit. So we're gonna add another label and we're gonna call this, uh, I guess we'll just call it GND since the other one is called motor ground. I'm gonna orient it and connect that to pin two. And there you have it. Uh, this isn't the most pretty, so I'm just gonna reorient it. Delete, delete these connections. Um, and connect these and then connect that. So this is the functional um, circuit diagram. 
And you'll probably notice these question marks everywhere. So the way we can label all our components in one step is go to this button here that says fill in schematic symbol reference designators. Click that and then just annotate. And there you have it. All our components are labeled now correctly. So there's one last thing we need to do and that is connect all these labels to something uh, that the software understands because right now it'll just see these labels and it won't know what to do with them. Uh, so for example, if we click this electrical rules check and we run it, it's, it's gonna say, you know, what is in one? You know, what is in two? It doesn't know what it is. So what we're gonna do to fix this is we're gonna add uh, a J connector. So click the symbol library and we can just do con and, you know, we can just have a simple uh, mail connector with with two pins. So we'll just select that and you can put it anywhere. And what we're gonna do is select uh, in one and we're gonna paste it right here. And we'll select in two and we can place that like here. We'll connect these. And so pretty much what, what we're telling um, this schematic software is, hey, N1 and M2 are gonna come from somewhere else and they're gonna be connected to this um, J connector device. And we'll just fix up the, the labeling right here. And there you have it. So we'll run these uh, these checks one more time. And it's, it's going to say symbol U1 pin six, not connected to anything. And, um, you know, that's that's fine with us. We don't need it connected to anything since it's an opto isolator. Uh, so, you know, one thing we can do is just click exclude this violation because we're aware of it. It doesn't affect our circuit. Uh, and it'll do the same thing for this one. Um, exclude this violation. We don't care. So the electrical rules check is happy. And you might be wondering, well, what about, you know, these grounds right here? That's a good point. We, we're gonna need to do the same thing um, if, if we are going to connect all the power externally speaking. So we can just uh, copy this whole thing right here and we'll change these labels uh, to the power labels. So this is gonna be our connector for the motor power. So we can set this one here. We can set this one right here. And there you have it. Now we have an external connection that'll be for our motor power. So the last thing we need to do is connect this ground to something. So we'll go back to the symbol explorer. We'll select con and we just want a single male header pin. We'll select that right here. And we will connect our microcontroller ground. So there you have it. And we will once again, get rid of this visibility and make sure everything is labeled. So the last thing we need to do guys is actually configure some output pins here for uh, the motor. So the motor is gonna go between the left and right side. And just to kind of visualize what this might look like, is we'll just put a DC motor in between uh, from here to here. However, the thing you need to keep in mind is when we're making a PCB, um, you, you can't just print the motor on the PCB, obviously. There needs to be some sort of output here from our circuit uh, to the actual motor itself. So even though this looks nice, it doesn't mean anything electrically speaking but we can do the same thing we did for these inputs right here, except we're gonna call them outputs. So if you just paste this here, we'll call this one O1, and we'll do the same thing over here. We'll call this O2. And you probably guessed it, we're gonna add some J connectors. And we're gonna call this one O1, and we're gonna call this one O2. So there, there you have it guys. We have a schematic setup that is ready to be converted to a PCB. And we've made it nice and clean by utilizing something called labels. And we've connected these labels to 
external uh, J header pins. And these are going to um, branch off our PCB and allow for inputs and outputs. All right, guys, thank you very much. If you enjoyed the content, please drop a like and subscribe and stay tuned for our next video on how to make an H-Bridge PCB.